Good afternoon, everybody. This is Paul, the weather guru, with your 2018-2019 winter seasonal outlook for Arkansas. We're going to cover the December through February time frame. Uh, for March, we will just look to uh, update this probably later on as we get closer to the season, probably into November or December. Uh, but right now, we will cover the primary months of uh, winter weather here in Arkansas. Here's some of the topics that we're going to talk about today. We'll start off with the winter weather outlook from NOAA. And then we'll get into what exactly an El Nino and ENSO consists of. The typical El Nino pattern graphic. I'll show you that. Uh, what type of El Nino pattern we may be looking at here. What it means for the state as far as uh, everything goes. And then that goes into my thoughts on the actual pattern for Arkansas. And then we'll get into the official forecast. So here is the winter weather outlook from NOAA. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is actually the three-month outlook for December, January, February. They produced this in uh, mid to late July. These will be updated regularly. Temperature is on the left. And as you can see right now, for Arkansas, we're looking at equal chances for now of uh, above or below normal temperatures. Uh, right now, they do expect above normal temperatures from much of Alaska all the way down to portions of the Canadian coastline uh, to the west. And then a good bit of the upper northwest area of the United States down into California, uh, across the mountainous region, out to the west, and across much of the northern plains and into the northeast. Uh, they're looking at above normal temperatures. I do think the northern plains areas and the northeast, that will tend to change as we go through time and we get closer to the season with some of the El Nino factors playing in, depending on what happens. I think NOAA will adjust these somewhat, and I believe most of this up here to the north will either go to an equal chance or possibly below normal temperatures. Um, and some of this may below normal temperature may come a little bit further down south into the Ohio Valley too uh, as we get into the future. On the right, we have precipitation. And right now for Arkansas, it's showing about a 33% chance of above normal precipitation. Um, and with the El Nino pattern, that typically will play out to some degree across uh, the state. The best chances of above normal precipitation will be out in Texas and parts of the southwest and then especially along the Gulf Coast states and Florida and then portions of the uh, lower east coast, the Outer Banks, over so down towards uh, Savannah, Georgia areas as well. We probably will see these adjust as well as we head into the um, months getting up to the winter weather season. I think you'll see more drier conditions become uh, evident out here in the parts of California. Uh, as well as the northwest, as systems will possibly tend to uh, bypass them to the east. <clears throat> so what is ENSO and El Nino anyway? What are we talking about? So basically what we do is we monitor uh, the waters along the equatorial Pacific. And El Nino specifically is a warming of uh, waters in the equatorial Pacific. Uh, we monitor four primary regions. There are regions 1, uh, plus 2, there's a plus three, 3.4, and four. So it's one and two are together. Um, so it's considered one region. Uh, but we monitor those regions and look at temperature differences through there. We're looking at the departures from the statistical averages over the last 30 to 35 years, whether it's warmer or colder <clears throat> than the average. And variations of temperature that are warmer than normal generally will indicate El Nino conditions are forming while variations cooler than normal uh, will typically indicate that La Nina conditions are forming. Uh, with El Nino conditions, we do expect to see more cloud cover and thunderstorm formation across the equatorial Pacific region. Of course, with warmer air, more rising motion, cloud formation, and precip. Um, when we're looking at La Nina conditions, when you have colder waters, we don't get all those factors uh, coming together, and it usually will be a, a less cloudy region and that's pretty easy for us to see on uh, your typical satellite shots. Here are those regions I was talking about. So this is looking at the equator itself. Uh, Nino region one and two is this box off here to the far right. It is right along the South American coast, just south of the uh, equatorial line. Uh, Nino region three is the big red box. Uh, basically, that covers pretty close to South America into the central uh, Pacific, equatorial Pacific region. Nino 3.4 is the box in the middle that basically is an average of parts of uh, Nino 3 and parts of Nino 4. Uh, that gives us a pretty good idea, especially when we're looking at Nino 3.4, uh, what conditions may exist. And then Nino 4 box uh, comes out here further to the west towards uh, New Zealand area. And then Australia off to the southwest there. So those are the regions that we're watching. 
I want to thank uh, this. This actually came from the Climate Prediction Center. This this graphic here. So I want to make sure that I uh, let everyone know where I'm getting my graphics from too. Here's your typical El Nino pattern. Now this graphic is courtesy of the Japanese Meteorological Agency. Uh, I pulled this from their site. But in a normal El Nino pattern uh, here, this is all the water temperatures, uh, actual water temperatures. Normally with an El Nino, you have very light surface winds uh, off of the South American coast. And when you have that, you have a lot of warm water develop uh, along this region because you don't have uh, strong easterly trade winds pushing this water off to the west and causing upwelling of cold water to come to the surface. When you have that, we usually get a bank of extremely warm temperatures. And then this black box is our, our regions uh, three and four for El Nino uh, that we just showed you on that other screen. You'll note this uh, warm water extends all the way out into the central Pacific and over into the west central equatorial region of the Pacific. Normally, we will also have cold air or excuse me, cold water temperatures into the Alaskan Bay area. And you'll have colder waters off of the coast of uh, Australia and uh, New Zealand and some of the smaller islands off to the uh, west here. Here is the current uh, temperatures as of uh, August the 1st for the equatorial regions. Now just to orient you, this is Central America, the South American coast here. Of course, we've got Australia and New Zealand. Uh, so one thing you'll note here, uh, temperatures are actually cooler along the South American coast, which is basically the opposite of what we just saw on the other, on the uh, average, what we normally will see for an El Nino. And all of your warm water right now is displaced over here to the uh, west as of right now. And a lot of that's due probably to stronger um, equatorial surface winds, uh, trade winds blowing off of the South American coast as of right now. And as it pushes the warm water off to the west, you're actually getting upwelling colder water coming to the surface in these regions. So as this, these trade winds die off, you'll see this modify a little bit and then warm with time. And you'll see a lot of these warmer waters eventually uh, ending up in the central uh, portions of the equatorial Pacific. So a typical El Nino pattern for the United States. Uh, what we've got here, uh, this is a persistent, it says extended Pacific jet stream. This really is a subtropical jet um, versus like a, a Pacific jet stream. Uh, the subtropical jet does, brand, does uh, run out through the Pacific region and normally with that we have low pressure systems that will come in along the uh, northern Mexico coast Baja of California they generally will come across uh, southern Texas skirt through the Gulf Coast and then they'll make their way up and around off the east coast and that's how we you know sometimes we get the nor'easters up there um, part of the reason for this is because you will eventually end up with some uh, Ridging up here to the north in Alaska, especially if there's warmer waters in the Bay of Alaska in Aleutian Islands areas, you'll get ridging to the north and that basically is blocking any of the systems that we, we get sometimes in the Pacific Northwest and some of these that come down like your Alberta Clippers and things like that. Um, most of that's going to uh, bypass us. Low pressure systems forming out in the central uh, Pacific will tend to ride the subtropical jet uh, along the coastline and bring us quite a bit more rainfall, uh, better chances for uh, precipitation in general. Uh, here's just another look at how this normally occurs. You'll note that uh, they do, in, in general, statistically, we have drier conditions across the Ohio Valley um, area, and it's generally warmer up to the north. However, this, this is probably going to be just a little bit different this year, and I'll tell you why here in just a second. So are we going to have a traditional El Nino or what we call a Motokai El Nino? So uh, we're going to, I'm going to show you the charts here in just a minute. But uh, remember the chart with the normal El Nino is up here in the upper left. In the lower right, I'm showing you what is normal, what is called a Motokai El Nino. Now something you'll note um, on this, colder water is off of the South American coast. Your warmer water is displaced uh, west of the central uh, Pacific Ocean region along the equator and you'll have cooler waters developing um, over here towards Australia and New Zealand and something else to note here is in the upper uh, portion of this picture in the Alaskan Bay and Aleutian area you've got a lot of warm waters piling up into those areas 
Again, normal El Nino, we talked about. Warmer waters off the South American coast. Motokai El Nino, colder, colder waters off of the South, uh, South American coast. And you can see better here all of the warm waters that normally would pile up in the Alaskan Bay, which would lend to more ridging uh, within the Bay of Alaska and up into the uh, Alaska region itself. So here is the current global sea surface temperatures. There's two things to note in this. One we talked about was the colder waters right here along the South American coast. It's still somewhat warm over here in the Australian and New Zealand area. However, it is starting to cool in these regions right now. Um, and then if you look in the Bay of Alaska here, um, up along near the Aleutian Islands, you do have warm water in this region. This is something, this is as of August the 9th. We're going to have to keep a close eye on this region, uh, both of these regions actually, and just kind of monitor them to see what the temperature profiles do over the next couple of months uh, and, and see where we end up because uh, we very well could end up in this uh, Motokai El Nino. And there's a couple of things that happen when you run into an, uh, this kind of situation. El Ninos that are regular or strong El Ninos generally don't uh, bring as much precipitation to the southern tier of the United States. Uh, the Motokai El Ninos um, tend to bring a little bit heavier, uh, better chances of above normal precipitation for the southern United States. So we will have to keep an eye on that as we go forward. So my thoughts on the pattern. So I really think that what we're going to see is a weak El Nino. Uh, and it is looking like a Motokai El Nino. So the indices, uh, most of the model consensus is that we will end up with a uh, weak El Nino overall. Uh, it doesn't look strong by any means. We actually could stay near neutral. Uh, right now it is just past the neutral point into a very, very, very weak El Nino type situation at the moment. The Climate Prediction Center, NOAA, is expecting, they forecasted a 70% chance of El Nino formation during the winter of this year, and they are also uh, putting out a El Nino watch, which isn't really that big of a deal. Um, as I said before, El Nino Motokai versions typically bring more moisture to the southern states, and what you normally will see is a ridge trough pattern in the U.S. where you have a western ridge, which is not good news for those in the fire regions of California and the uh, Northwest right now. And you'll have an Eastern trough. So what you end up with is a lot of warm air out West and you have uh, quite a bit cooler air off to the East. And uh, especially depending on what happens as we get into the season, something else that we need to watch uh, Siberian implications and complications. Uh, we'll be watching snowfall over in Siberia. There's a noted researcher, uh, Judah Cohen, Cohen, I believe, uh, that has been doing some studies on Siberian snowfall and how it uh, affects the United States weather and the correlation between the cold air that we get here and what they end up as far as uh, snowfall in Siberia. So as we get into October and early November time frame, we'll start looking at uh, what they're getting over there uh, because that could have an impact on how cold some of the air is that we get over here too. Uh, and also complications of the subtropical tropical jet and moisture transport. So in general, uh, during the wintertime, we like to see a polar front jet move south of the state. When we have that happen, we normally will get good cold air into here. Um, right now, the subtropical jet is going to be running pretty close uh, through the Gulf of Mexico um, as of right now. So... At times, we may see the polar front jet dip down far enough south to bring us the colder air. Uh, depending on timing with the subtropical jet, um, we may have systems that affect us. Now, these jets could be far enough south, at least the subtropical jet, that it's too far south into the Gulf, and the systems uh, go off the Gulf Coast and stay offshore and move east through the Gulf, reemerge into Florida, and then go up the East Coast. If that occurs in general, we won't see any type of uh, precipitation, just a lot of cloud cover uh, possible with that. So that's going to have a lot of implications on what really happens with our weather. So what's this going to mean for Arkansas? Uh, traditionally, it means cooler conditions occur here, and traditionally will mean wetter conditions occur. So as of right now, here is my official forecast, uh, temperature forecast for December through February. Seasonally, I do believe we'll be slightly above normal as far as the uh, overall temperatures are concerned. 
I think once you add up the three months and we get uh, outside of the season, you will see that they all are uh, slightly above normal. It's probably not going to be by a whole lot. Uh, with that said, I do expect we will have a couple of cold shots just like we do every year. It, it will be winter after all. Um, and I do think that we will have a couple of cold shots that are cold enough for us to have highs below 32 degrees. Um, I think that's not necessarily an inevitability, but I think it uh, is, is going to occur this year. Um, but overall, uh, I even think individual months will tend to be either near normal or slightly above normal. And the season as a whole will be above normal on temperatures. Official precipitation forecast, December through February. So in the northern two-thirds of Arkansas, uh, I, I think we'll be near normal to slightly above normal on precipitation. Uh, I don't think by a whole lot we may be about 10% above normal, uh, what we would normally get for December to February. Uh, the southern one-third of Arkansas, you'll be closer to some of those systems that may come through the southern tier of the United States uh, that skirt along the coast. If that's the case, you probably will be a little bit above normal, um, maybe 20% above normal on what you typically 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 bleh, get uh, for the winter weather season. So I have included an official ice forecast December through February. Uh, again, the northern two-thirds of Arkansas, I'm going to give this at least a 50% chance of uh, one icing event. Uh, and then the southern one-third, a 25% chance of at least one icing event. So when I'm talking about that, what I'm basically trying to get across here, and the reason for this, um, when we have systems come in from the Pacific Northwest, they're more of a maritime polar uh, system with a cold core. Uh, they've, got, they've been across really cold waters. Um, and in general, they have colder characteristics as they head inland and head down the polar front jet into our area. So the chances of that marrying up with cold air uh, that is a little bit thicker in depth is better. Uh, when we have systems that ride the subtropical jet, we need to have a slug of cold air from the north that has considerable depth. Um, the problem with that is I think a lot the, the shots we're going to get this year, you're going to have cold Arctic air, which tends to be pretty shallow. You're going to have systems coming off the uh, southern Pacific, per se, uh, and coming in that are warmer cord systems. And typically, when we have systems coming from the southwest, the conditions aloft above 5,000 feet, actually down to 3,500 feet. If winds are out of the west and southwest, that's warmer air that we get, and it will be riding over the top of colder air. Therefore, I think that we're going to have a better shot of ice this year, uh, in the setup for Arkansas, unfortunately. And here's what everybody really, really wanted to see, probably. Um, my official snowfall forecast for December and February. You'll notice everything is just blue. Um, I, I think overall will be near normal uh, snowfall for the state, majority-wise. Uh, the northern two-tier row of counties, I'm going to go against the grain here, and I'm going to say that you're going to be below normal snowfall-wise. Uh, normal snowfalls up to the north can generally range to about a foot, a little more in some places. Central Arkansas, about four inches. South, an inch, inch and a half, maybe two. Uh, we have had a couple of big snow years, obviously, in the north. Uh, I don't think this is going to be one of them. And I think uh, with the transport of the systems this, this year, uh, with most a lot of them going to the south, further into the gulf and things like that, if that occurs, you won't see as much snow to the north. I think the further north you go from here, the less snow you're going to get, basically. Uh, I think there's going to be quite a bit of uh, lack of snow um, in the northern tier of the United States as far as the upper Midwest and into the northern plains. And I think uh, the Ohio Valley in general will be drier and below normal on snowfall as well. I think the exceptions to that will be the Great Lakes. Uh, I think you will have uh, more opportunities for uh, Great Lakes snowfall, the lake effect enhancement type stuff going on up there. But overall, uh, in, into the, those areas, you're not going to see as much. So here, I think that we will have snowfall. We'll have a much better chance at winter weather here this year, uh, thankfully, because of the pattern. But uh, overall, I just don't, I don't think we're going to see um, any humongous storms. Now, of course, it only takes one to ruin this whole thing. And me of all people would love to see that happen. Um, 
I don't like to be wrong on forecasts, but this is one of those that I definitely do not mind being wrong on. Um, you know, this is just an outlook and everybody at this point that's doing these is, is taking a, basically a wild guess and doing the best educating that they can to get to their uh, consensus. And that's all I'm doing here. Um, giving it everything I've got and this is what I've come up with. So I hope we have better news. Uh, once we get to February, we can look back and say, Hey, you completely blew it. We got a foot and a half in little rock. Everybody's enjoying it, whatever. So, uh, but that is all I've got. Uh, just to wrap it up. I think that, uh, above normal temperatures, slightly above normal precip for most of us, except for Southern Arkansas, probably will have at least one ice event, uh, happening for the Northern two thirds of the state. And then uh, snowfall will be close to normal. Um, that is going to conclude this. I want to say thank you to everybody for coming to Paul the Weather Guru's weather page on Facebook. If you have any questions about this, please send me a message. I'd be happy to answer them or leave a message in the uh, comments below this video. I'll be uploading this here in just a few minutes. Uh, but that's going to be it. I appreciate your patronage over on the site. Uh, thanks for <coughs> excuse me, uh, taking care of each other, asking great questions, and being nice to each other. I really appreciate that over on the web weather page. Um, hope you guys have a great weekend and, uh, we'll see how this plays out here in the future.